welcome. Well, I'm not sure if this is going to be a new series, but it's some up we're going to do, and I think I'm going to love it, and I'm sure that you guys will love it as well. Obviously, Preston as a company, we do lots and lots of filming, but I thought it's time to change a few things around. And obviously, this is all about getting you guys catching more fish. So what we've got, I've got Zolt fishing today. Now, Adam's going to be filming. I've got my little Desi cam. But today is all about basically coaching Zolt on a venue. Now we're at Manor Farm Leisure near Evesham. It's a great venue. And it's some of the Zolt, he's not done that much commercial fishing. And I think personally to coach Zolt, like I do with the one I do coach anyway, and I know how important it is from messages that I get back saying, Des, you're coaching. And we all know there's lots of coaches out there now. It makes a huge difference to your fishing. And I thought, what a great opportunity to bring the cameras. So we're going to actually do like a live coaching day with Zolt because he doesn't do a lot of this fishing he doesn't do a lot of F1 fishing he does he does quite a lot of feeder fishing so this whole process today is one I'm going to coach him today so there's no match going on this is just about coaching but getting him ready for a match now after this film he's going to we're going to bring him back to this venue and we're actually going to fish a match now I'm going to be sat by the side of him today and I'm also gonna be sat by the side of him in the match. Now, there's a serious side to this. Obviously, when I do coaching, I do take it very, very seriously because I want the guys to come off the bank and they're, they're absolutely convinced, and I know they are, that they're gonna to go to a match the next time they go fishing and they're gonna be that much better at catching fish. And that is what I'm going to attempt with Zolt. Now, this is called Coaching the Uncoachable. Where, now this, obviously, that's a little title we've come up for it. It might actually be the truth. He might be uncoachable, but I don't think he is. I think Zolt, deep down, even though he goes fishing with me a lot, like probably once or twice a week, and he goes out of all sorts of different consultants that Press Innovations um, sponsor, let's get down to him, because he's actually done quite a lot of prep. I'm looking at him now. He's looking at his box, um, box of floats and hooks and everything. And I'm absolutely itching to get them. The weather's not great today, it's a bit rainy, but hopefully we'll hold out while we get fishing. Let's get down and see what he's doing. And I'm gonna go through everything with him. And obviously you guys will pick up loads of tips as well. So anyway, Zolt, I think this is great because all I've got out is my fishing box to sit on and you're now here being coached by someone you normally film. Yeah, that's so you're out of your comfort zone a bit, aren't you? Uh, yes, yes. I'm much more comfortable behind the camera than so, front of the camera. So this is your setup. We've had to mess around with setup a little bit. His side tray was a little bit backwards and we've moved it up so everything's to hand. And these are the sort of things, you know, when you go fish, it's yeah. really important. I've been told a few times. So yeah, you will. And I will tell you off, so, And I will probably give you a clip around here or if you're doing something really wrong. But he's got his rollers all set up nice now. Everything's ready to go. We've got his top kits on there because I'm sat over to the left-hand side because that's where I need to be to sort of coach him. So, obviously, we're at Manor Farm. We're on this little lake called Willow, I think it's called. Or Windmill. Windmill, I think. So you've got a nice little island chuck. And the first thing we spoke about this morning was a lot of these venues now in the country have a lot of small fishing, don't they? And they're a bit of a nuisance. And I think it forces you into fishing hard pellet, especially at the start of the day. So we're going to run through the rigs, I think, first. And then we'll run through the baits Bait. as we get fishing. Because we've got a lovely selection of baits. He's also set up a little feeder rod. He's brought the wrong rod. I told him to put a nine footer in, he's put a 12 footer in and the island's about 18 meters away. So he's overcooked the rod, but anyway, we'll let you off. At least you brought a rod in At real. At least I have a rod. Exactly. 
So we've set up a little method feeder, little ICS, 20 gram, four inch up length, 12 foot ignition rod, which I think is over a gun for what we're doing. But Likely. anyway, we'll, we'll have to deal with that. Um, so let's talk about the rigs that you've set up. So uh, you've not plumbed up yet, have you? No, I haven't plumbed up. Let me up just yet. put this down a minute. Get out of the way. So Don't what I've said to Zolt is personally, um, you've got the island today, but personally, I think we're going to start on the pole short. So we've set up a... F1 maggot, 4x14. Yeah, what about main line? Uh, that one is 015 reflow. Right, not 017. Uh, I have 017 as well. So you've put 015 on? Yes. Right, okay. That's, that would probably be the minimum, especially this time of year. And I will do the coaching like I do with all you know with normal people coaching. If I was coming here in the summer like I am now with this, this. Because you said that it's F1, so that's why I thought that all 15. But things can change. This lake also holds some great big carp. You might get the biggest problem for me, Zol, is when you're fishing with 015. If the fishing's hectic, right, and you think I'll step up to 015 up length, you yeah. then you're fishing with the same hook length the as main line. Yeah. So in this time of year, with it's summer, I think 017 would probably be my rig of choice. But anyway, we'll probably get away with it, but I'm just thinking probably for the for the match, all your rigs need to be set up on 017. Yeah. So shot in pattern. Uh, it's two number nine droppers. Two number nines, not number tens? No number nines. Right, okay. That's fine. Number nines or tens. I like tens, but... Number nines are fine. Okay. Stots or shot? Stots. Yep. Stots. And the bulk of... Uh, Look how neat that is. That's a nice, neat bolt, that, actually. That's a very clever result. That's good. They're sound. Yeah. Hook length? Uh, hook length-wise, I've <coughs> uh, been lazy a bit. And oh, you've done pre tight haven't you? Yes. That's brilliant. Yes. That's uh, all you need. G GPM, size 16. So, have you got an eyed hook on there or spade end? Spade end. So you're going to hook the band? Yes. Right, like I do a lot. Yes. Right, yes. okay. I learned from you. Yeah, that's one thing he's learned. So that's your thing. We're going to plumb up in a minute. So you've also set up an edge rig? Uh, yes. Uh, edge rig is all 19. Oh, four. see, that's better. There's only F1s in here, remember? Yeah, by edge Well, ah, that's the attitude you should have had for your bottom rig. Is uh, <clears throat> carp shallow 4x14. Four right, okay. Uh, simple bulk. Simple bulk and again pre tight hook at yep. this age. A little bit stronger. A little bit stronger size. Uh, six, six inch. Six inch, yes. Okay, same. Elastics? Uh, on the edge rig it's uh, 17. Size, size 17. And, and what about the others? 13. 13. Yeah, so that's going to give you the option of catching everything because there's yes. like a few silvers and everything in here. Let's do the plumbing up first because that's mega important. Yes. And obviously for you guys, this is, you know, this is what I do when I'm coaching to see how you plumb up, where to plumb up. So let's do a bit of plumbing up first. Now, obviously you've got to be aware of Zolt that there's a lot of fish to be caught short on not just this venue, but lots of venues in the country. Sometimes you don't even have to come off of it. You can literally go in and catch all day. All day. On that, on that, you might have to change baits. That's why we got, we got some luncheon meat. We got a selection of um, pellets. We got a bit of corn, and we've also got some ground bait mixed up, which Zolt's gonna put push for a riddle in a minute. So let's do a bit of plumbing up. I've done it. Oh, you've done it. All I've right, same. Okay, all right. For twenty gram or thirty gram? Uh, twenty. You got both out. No, I, 20. I both, both out. Which one I should well, get? 20, I would. Yeah. 20 gram for me is like the perfect plummet, really. And we will take this quite seriously because obviously in the match... Well, that was, that was pretty quick. What distance I should... Well, plummet. go top kit in two. And then we'll come back to top kit in one. Because what I'm always looking for is the option of having the option of dropping back on a top kit in one because later in the match nearly. so we're nearly yeah so just come back a section a minute before you bring it in now go back out and just have a look on your top kit in one 
Right, so what's that telling you? Uh, the dump fishing on the... That, that is really important. Now, just keep going out a bit, because this is the sort of thing that I do when I'm fishing, trying to find where it bottoms out onto the silt. Yeah? Yeah, just reach out. Goes down slightly, doesn't it? But not a lot. Yeah, not a lot. Now, it's always... For me, though, in a match sometimes, you might have to set another rig up for that because sometimes they won't come in too close. Bear in mind, it's not so hot today. I mean, I would just come back like half a joint and just get onto that tough, that, that hard bottom. I know you, want to, you might have to sort of like mark your pole, but that can be absolutely deadly. Honestly, I can't, you know, I can't sort of stress enough that fishing on hard bottoms, you can also, you can even fish it on an angle. If you want to fish like a full section, just have a go round to the left, go out right to the end. Because I always try and I always try and fish if I can on the end of a section. Now that's a, look at that. So that's deeper that side, much, isn't it? Much yeah, come in a bit. Come in towards me. Look at that. That's different again, isn't it? Yeah. That is what you've got to do when you're plumbing up. Always plumb up around your peg and see what's what, because that is like deep. That is as yeah. deep. That's closer in, isn't it? it drops a lot, yeah, yeah, come in slightly to the left. See when it comes up. That's unbelievable, that difference there. Because I think that's a really nice spot. It's on the end of that tree and it's deep close in. I think you could have a real good run down there. When you're plumbing up, are you plumbing up like bottom of the <clears> body? No, like I've always said, just have that body out of the water about, an, about half an inch, an inch. So just come back again, just move that float up a little bit, put, put, put a bit more depth on. Because you can't mess about in a match, though. You ain't got loads of time. So what you've got to do is have a little plumb around. If, you're not, if, you're not, if you ain't got it right, come back, move it up. Don't get like sitting there for like 20 minutes, knocking it, you know, just like plumbing it around, plumbing it around. You want to get back and get your float near to where you're going to be, you know, like your perfect plumbing up. Right, just drop it in nice and slow. Right, I would put a fraction more on that, just literally like that much. All right, so he's plumbed up at the moment, so the body's just literally touching the surface of the water or the bottom of the body. I just want a little bit more on. So just come back. Don't just sit there. As I said, when you're match fishing, you don't get loads of time to set up, so you have to move on a bit. Just move that up about half an inch. Because you understand what we've done at the moment. Plumb up in front, I said as well, just have a look down there. It's actually deeper, closer to the bank, to the left. It's lovely, that, isn't it? So get yourself marked up with something on the other side, because I reckon that's a great spot, I do. Yeah? Yeah. Right, now plumb up in front of you. See if we can find the same depth with the same rig. So you've made up, we've made ourselves two options. You might not get that on every peg. So we've got the option of fishing a top kit in two there. We've also got an option. That's like a top kit in one, but slightly to the left. So that's perfect. Next thing, obviously, shorten the line down because we're only fishing short. I would say, for you, Zolt, I would say sort of 18 inches, maybe a foot between the elastic and your float. We're not going to be fishing the long pole today, but the same process would be the same. I'll be plumbing up, have a little plumb around. A lot of pegs that you go to, you'll find in front of you, will have a bit of a hollow, and that's normally where everybody fishes. I like to find a spot or two spots where I can fish the same rig at the same distance and I can go from one line to the other. One line, you know, one is if things change during the match, um, you might have to fish the same bait on both lines. Sometimes you can experiment with different baits. That normally only comes into it when I think the fishing is quite difficult and maybe if you go to a new venue and you've got it slightly wrong at the start. But if you can do what like Zolt's plumbed up there, even on that short line, if you can do that long as well, so you've got that option, you know, it is massive. You can't always do it. Sometimes you've got to set another rig up for it if you want to fish like down that area there. But today, lucky enough, in this in this peg, we found two spots, the same depth, and we can just go from one spot to the other with the same float. Something like that. Yep. So you're going to mark the depth with a bit of tipex. Uh, you haven't got no tipex. No. So we'll leave it, and won't we? So we got your depth markers on it. So basically, it's just above what's that? Both. Sixty inches. Yes. So, that. so let's stick him down then. So he's ready to go. Bit of margin. 
This is another massive thing in fishing. And what I'm gonna to say to you, Zol, is the same principle what I just said about. My personal preference is like 16, 18 inches. And if you go from there to there, so if you put your plummet on there, yep. right, that's a little bit bigger than the side tray at the minute. Because these side trays are roughly 18 inches. So put them back on there again. All right. That, that looks really shallow when you're holding it like that, doesn't it? Yes, it is. But shallow. actually, I'll just put a tad on. But you'd be amazed the size of the fish that come into that shallow water and you do not see a single swirl. So roughly 18 inches to have a look, just to see, because we haven't plumbed up. Let's have a quick look. Yeah, top kit in one. Don't go too far because we're pretty limited what we can do here anyway. No. No, that's all right. Come right into the bank. Let me just have a look. I might get me Desi cam on this sun's old. Well, you ain't got that option, have you? Come down to the left. Again, have a look down to the left. Even deeper. Yeah? Yeah. Right, so come back. Yeah, that's deeper. That's... So what happens on this peg? It seems to be shallower to the right and deeper to the left. Now, and what you've done there, that's what I do. I get down there. I don't just keep plumbing up. I want the float out of the water so I can tell what's happening with the bottom. It's very hard to tell unless that float is out of the water. So is that a top kit plus one or a top kit in a bit? Uh, top kit yeah. So we got to find, it's quite deep. That's the only thing with that margin. Just come away from the bank, see when it drops off. Oh, that's lovely. So that's like a little bit of a flat spot there. That's him. Bang on. And just have a little look down here again. Just even on a top kit. Just what you call a throwaway line. It's deeper, that, isn't it? What if you come right in? See if you can just drop it like right in to the bank. Nope. No, too deep. So we know if we want to go down there, we'd probably have to put like an inch or, inch or two on, I would say. It's about that much difference, isn't it? Uh, so if there is an option of maybe using the same rig, just moving it up a bit. So let's get that out. Cut that line down. Nice short. Sort of ran about a foot again. So it's nice down there. We can't, we haven't got, we're quite limited because we can't, we've got a big tree to the right there and we've also got this bush to our left. So we are quite limited on how far we can go down the edge but in the summer months i'm not really that bothered about that because as we know on a venue such as manor farm there's a lot of fish in here a lot of f1s a lot of carp and i think we can bring the fish to us we don't have to go to them obviously later in the year when it is cooler off you might want to go down the bank a little bit but let's all just cut these lines down and we're going to stick with that today we're going to do a bit of mephra feeder fishing the long pole we might, as, as the day goes on, we're going to set a shallow rig up, which is just going to be like a carp shallow, 4B10, set it for around about 18 inches. And then obviously we can just feed that and see how we get on. But I'm going to get Zolt to concentrate today on this short line and down the edge, because I honestly think in that match, well, and a method, because I think the match in a couple of weeks' time or a week's time, it's going to be on Island Lake, and hopefully we'll have a method feeder chuck to the island. So I want to do a little bit of that with him today. So he's cut them down now. So we've got a 4B14 carp shadow for down the edge. Yep. As it happens, a 4B14 is absolutely bang on because it's quite deep. So that was a good, well, was that like luck? Four, luck? luck. <laughs> it was luck. So 4B14, 4B12s down the edge. Great all round sort of float of carp shadow because we're fishing for F1s and carp. That's what I like about them floats. Got the F1 maggot for fishing short. Feeder. Right, so just fly through the feeder. I know you've set that up. Yeah, the 12 foot is a bit overkill. It's a bit overkill, but we don't matter. Because I think that 12 foot will be good for the island lake. Yeah. 20 gram. 20 is that gram. a 20 gram? Yeah. Yep. 20 gram ICS. 20 gram ICS. One of those new 360, 360 beads. beads. Uh, hook length is... Four inch. Lazy options again. It's not lazy options, they're just good options. So you've got a 16 KKM? KKM, yes. 
the with a band on. Band so we can if we start on little bandoms or hard pet. I got you some robin reds as well. Oh, thank you. Robin reds are always a good option on these venues. Catch a lot of fish on robin reds. Um, then we got some little bandoms and stuff, haven't we? Yeah. And we got some marine, uh, marine ground bait, match method mix marine. But we got to do your micros. Yeah. Even though they're a bit damp, so. For me personally, I want we're going to use them for down the edge and on the method. Just stick some water on them a minute. Go on, fill it right up. Keep going. Go on, stick a lot of that in. And just bang them around. Not one finger, though. Just get your hand in there. And what I'm going to leave them for about 30 seconds to 45 seconds because we want them for the method as well. Okay. All right. So if we get your ground bait in there, ready. And then we want some little bands out. Get your catapult ready. So we got four Is mils. The ground bait is all right like that? Yeah, it's fine. Absolutely perfect. So that's just Max Mephra Mix. He's, he's opted for Max Mephra Mix Marine, which is signed for... We might even have to put it down the edge because if they don't respond to your micros and like the meeting core, we might have to put it down the edge, but that with that depth of water, we just got to go a bit careful, it's but, like, like but never deep. write ground bait off. It's not too deep for ground No, bait. because you can mix them with your micros, you don't have to put loads of ground bait in, but you can mix it with your micros just to get the fish going. Okay. And then obviously, depending on foul looking and liners and things like that, you might have to cut them out. So let's just drain them off. You haven't got your pellet wetter, have you, have you? Uh, actually, I did use for the corn. Oh, no, you ain't got, oh, well, it's too late now. And we're running out of time, so I think it's going to pour down in rain. And I don't like getting wet, so. No, me neither. You know, so anyway, they're done. Obviously, I would do this normally quite early, but because we're not starting on the method, don't worry about it. But obviously, I would do these. One of the first things I would do is, is put my box down, get your side tray on. Do your ground bait and do your pellets, all right? But we have run out of time. You know, plumbing up is really important. <clears throat> Sometimes, like Zolt's done, would you have normally done that, though? Uh, plumbed up in front and then had a look down here and no, tried to usually find... usually I just plumbed up one swim. Yeah, you're quite I'm lazy, not... aren't you? Yeah, I am lazy, yes. So we're ready to go, Zolt. Now we've got our little bit of a, you know, bit of a mixture of baits, and sometimes it can be quite confusing. Aren't it? it can be for oh, yes. someone like even even for me sometimes. But you've got to have a selection of bait. I know sometimes we'll probably end up, you know, not using some of it. But you've got to have your selection of pellets. So you've got your two, you know, your two fours and sixes. We've not got any eights out because I don't think really we're going to need them. And we've got our meat and corn. Um, we've obviously put a couple of cab pots on the edge rig and the rig we're fishing short because they're really important because I think at the start we don't want to be chucking bait if we can help it because chucking bait sometimes you end up foul looking everything we'll see how we go and I love chucking bait I just love it I think balling. it's it, well not balling I do like balling it as well but we're not going to be doing that so also get that out of your head straight away okay um, but one thing I do do a lot of is hooking the band for the hard pellet right okay it's easy so if you were using a hair rig band, for example, and then you want to put a bit of meat on because you want to change baits, so that means you've got to take the hook off and then put another hook on. I just like hooking the band. I used to do it years and years ago, and I've gone back to it over like probably four or five years now, and it's been brilliant. So if I get your, if you just pass me your top kit that we're fishing on the bottom with, and you can do this down the edge as well, because sometimes you go to venues, if the roach are an absolute nuisance, sometimes you've got to fish hard pack down the edge. That's the, some venues are like that. So you've got your two, you've got your two sort of bands there. You, your medium and your small. We've opted for mediums because we're probably going to try and start feeding four meals. But I think with F ones and carp waters, mixed fishery, if you like, a lot of the time you're feeding fours and fishing a six on the hook. Sometimes you've got to go down to a four. But the art of it is to go, I've got my medium band, so I put the hook inside the band, right, and then hook the band in a, in halfway down or halfway through the material. And it sits on a slight angle like that. 
So it actually sits going up towards the shank. If you pass me a six mil pellet, so you actually put the hook in the band and then back out the side, but it's actually put the, the latex band. I need my glasses on, Zolt, didn't I? Yeah, see that then? No, no, I don't want them. No, they're too strong for me, Zolt, at the moment. So that goes on there then. Make sure that that band is sort of flat around the pellet. You can do that by just like wiggling it a little bit and you can push that so it sits like oh, that. Sitting like in the it's back lovely, it's just off the back of the shank. It's not up the shank, I just prefer it like that. So just a little tip there, we're gonna start on that short line out in front and all I want you to do is basically put like 24 mils in and a couple of sixes with that little medium cab pot. Don't count them in, just nice. Couple of sixes, like yeah, that's it, perfect. It's quite negative, isn't it? Yes. And then dip them in the water before we ship out. We have put some oil on them, haven't we? Yeah. But it just helps, so I think it just helps break down the film to stop the pellets sinking. The last thing, well, stop, stop them from floating. The last thing we want, we just want them pellets to go down to the bottom. That's it, and just tap them out now. Stop it from the high? Or... No, no, keep it quite low, I would at the start. Sometimes you make the more noise you make, the worse the small fish fishing is. It drags them in your peg. The only thing I would do now, not just yet, because we've only just started. Now give that a little flick to the side, because your because your line's a bit greasy. You might have to put a little number eleven stop on there, just to bring it down a bit. I did notice out on that ring, you've actually put no adjustment stops on, have you? No. So that's no. you know sometimes if you just put one or two on. You might have to, it helps you at the start of the match or the start of your session, and you might have to take it off as you go along. Once that line, the grease comes off your line, it, um, you know, you can take it off and it still sits there perfectly. But that's nice there. Would you do some more down the <clears throat> um, boat, No, I think that's about right, Zolt. But what you want to do is try and hold that. When we start getting bites, the art of that sort of, or, or the art of all this sort of fishing, is holding your pole tip over top your float. Now, I don't use back shots. That's personal preference, and if it's something you like doing, it just helps you. A back shot definitely helps you hold the pole over top your float. And when you're getting a bite, obviously you can strike a lot, lot quicker. It's instant, if you know what I mean. Instead of having your pole to the side, and you get that slight time lapse. No, that's bang on, that is. So we'll see what happens. Obviously, sometimes it's instant, sometimes it's not. There's a lot of big F1s in here and they can be really crafty. The nice thing is, what I'm looking for is not getting bitted out. I don't want to get bitted out if I can help it. There we are, little nut. Now, you should have struck it that. Oh. Well, I don't know what you were looking at then, Zolt. Oh, so the float was like, like that, and he didn't. He just sat there thinking, what was that going on? I think he was waiting for the last thing to come out. Right, so just lift and drop like three or four inches, not a lot. Nice and slow. No, too quick. Right, let it go down slow. Right, and what you can do, that's it, you are. So it's only a small fish. Yeah, don't worry about it. No, he's come off. That's all right. Right, just check you at length. We'll check the hook. Back in, a few pellets. Feeding again? Yeah, a few fours, like 10, that's all. A couple of sixes. Dip it in the water. And then tap your pellets in first. So the first thing you do is go out to the end of your pole, tap your pellets in. Go on quick, as quick as you can. There was no messing with this. And then flick your rig just past your pole tip. That's it, and let it come down. Hold your pole, hold your float out of the water just a little bit. Let it all straighten up. Drop your pole down. And when you get there, that's when you can let it go fast. And sometimes if your line's a bit greasy, it helps your float go down, if you know what I mean. So make sure you're on that now. So hold your pole just above, just up a bit. So this obviously is a gamble, because in the match, you've got that island. If you want to do today, you could fish that island. I would start by that. Well, not necessarily, because this line can be, that's all, you know, that is gambles that you have to take. A bite then? Yep. Let's leave it out of the water a bit. Right, let it go down. Whoa, no, hold it there, and then let it go fast. Yep, that was a better bite, see? That was one of those quick bites. So just hold your float up again. Just half half down the half down the stem, hold it there and then drop it fast. That's it. Perfect. 
That helps you get your float down yeah. with the tension of the line. Little lift bite there, and probably a little fish. The things that I'm trying to learn when I do this in a match is if there's a lot of small fish problems, then I'm quite reluctant to change to meat. If you go to a venue which meat's allowed, you've got to go, oh, that was a barber bite, wasn't it? You've got to go careful because I wouldn't, you know, what I don't want to do with hard pellet, it's not too bad because you can sit there and with a hard pellet, you just drop it back in again. With me, you miss a bite, you've got to put another yeah. bait on. So I'm very, I'm reluctant, unless I know the venue really well, you've got to go a bit careful, especially at the start of a session, because there might be a lot of little fish problems for the first hour or so, and then all of a sudden they're gone, and then you can start fishing meat and corn and soft baits. You know, expanders today, I would probably have a few done up, but they'd probably, they'd be there just in case rather than but you never know from one day to the next i've been to a, a couple of venues recently and i've had a few six and four mil expanders done up and they normally they get bitted out on them and also you go there and it's like hello what's happened here the sewer fish shut up shop all of a sudden you can fish expanders wallop f1 carp big bream so it's just giving that option and with a you know we all know with me little pro expanders they're so easy to do it's not as if you're messing them out at home you can do them on the bank. Oh, perhaps not. Oh, yeah, it is. That was a bit, I thought that was a proper one then. It's a swing result. Little roach. That's it. Oh, well, if you're getting luck like that in the match, we're squids in, aren't we? So just check the. Better to be lucky I would than good just change that pellet now. I know we've only caught, just change it. I hate catching a fish and not changing my hook bait. So, we've had a few roach. What would be going for your mind now? Bear in mind, we're trying to catch uh, F1s of carp. Feed more. Bigger pellets. That's the first thing I would do is cut out the fours at the moment and just put sixes in. Six. Yeah, Yeah, put like 10 sixes in. That's what goes to my mind straight away. It might not work, but that would be the first thing going through my mind. Oh, yes, baby. Proper bite that. Skin bob, I reckon. That's all right, just good practice, do you know what I mean? And believe you me, Zolt, in some of the matches on this venue, if you can catch 30, 40, 50 pound of skimmers on the way to your, 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 you know, your total, that can make a massive difference. I think the last match I'd done, I'd done a live match here uh, a while back, well, a, couple, a year or so ago, and I caught 40 odd pound of skimmers Whoa. doing what you're doing. Yeah, but that made the massive difference that got you in the frame, you know, and that's, yes. it's not all about catching carp and F1. Sometimes you've got to catch them on the way. Yeah, get your slime off. Should I change the product? 100%. Or? I would give you a, a clip round here if you didn't, so. No, don't worry about that. Right. Just use, yeah, use what, you, what you're what you used to doing. So the band's still on. Obviously we were hooking the band. No problem at all. Just put a fresh pellet on. Just move that up the shank a little bit. It's basically where the hook's like that, the band, say that's the point, it comes round like that and the hook is just going up the shank and the hook sort of sticks out lovely. It might have been worth having a few eights out, but I didn't want to confuse you too much with different baits, you know, lots of different sizes of baits. <clears throat> now, the only other option, obviously, when you're doing this, because we can actually fish that island, you had you would have had the option today of actually loose feeding a few pellets over to the island. So if you were in a match situation and you wanted to just, if you know, if you wanted to use that, it gives you you could catapult would you, a few pellets. Would you lose feed on the shore? Yes, like but not just yet, because you've got your edge line at the moment with these surface fish, and I'd be very dubious and very like, I just want to make sure that you're not going to get bitted out too much. It is a big problem in some of the lakes nowadays, and that's why hard pellet fishing is so deadly. Just hold your pole slightly higher, like that. So what you do, I always look, if you've got that much line between your float and your, like, along across the water, right, you're holding it so it doesn't affect the presentation of your float, but it's as close, it's like you've got a back shot on, but you haven't.
and it's a bit of noise. See how you go. Sometimes at the start, at the start like this, you've got to experiment a little bit. That's sometimes your bite. That little dink like that on some venues I go, that's all you get. Like tunnel. tunnel, places like that. Heronbrook, I had some, you know, fish Heronbrook the other day. It's ridiculous. Tiny, tiny little indications. Yep. Oh, what was that? Was that a silverfish or I don't know? I think it was off, right. the, off the bottom. No, that was in the mouth, that was, I reckon. Right, fire, fire a few sixes over the top. I wouldn't fire fours at the minute because we are getting a few little silverfish problems. No, that's all right. Just fire a couple more. I do do that, so I don't fire my bait every single time around me float like that. I wish I could. But, you know, we all make little errors, don't we, during the match? There we go. That's it. Hold on. Oh, that might have been fouled that. Just come back and check your pellet. That's the risk that you do by throwing, but sometimes you've got to throw to get a response. So just fire, just cup in a few fours, not many, maybe like 10, something like that. That's it, little dink. We put them in the water because it just stops you. One, it gets you out of there fast, doesn't it? You know, you don't rattle the pellets out so much as well. So tap them in. Right, lift that bulk up. Lift it out. Whoa, no, 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 no. Bring it back. Straight down. And just hold that half stem out of the water. And then down. And just hold that pole, just the up a tiny bit, a bit. Because your reactions, having it like that, your reaction's obviously a lot quicker. Yep. Tiny bite, wasn't it? Uh, oh, see that great big carp just bow wave off then? I thought that was the one you had on then, but that was one that was going around shallow. That's what we want. Get them skimmers, the old F1. Now, in the match situation, when we come back for the match, you might have to do this long. That's like 13 metres. No, no, it's, oh, it's 13, fine. 13 yeah, 13 metres. I don't think we'll be fishing like 40 and a half and 16. I just don't think there's any need of it. You're not going to change that pellet? I do change no, the pellet. No, go on, go yeah. on. No, I'll, no. Let you have, I'll let you have this one. Really? Yeah. See what happens. Should I feed them? Yeah, a few four mils. And we'll fry, fire a few six over the top by hand. I think I'm just trying to get in, you know, trying to get in your mind, your little system. Dunk that in the water. And then tap them in and then drop that bolt straight on top of the pellets. Just line them out a little bit over like a sort of a foot area. Yeah, not all down the same hole. That's it. And then drop that, bring that bulk up. Let the bolt come out of the water. Go on, lift him up. It's really important. We want that float right off the end of the pole tip, not on an angle. Yeah, just and then down. And then hold that pole. That's one thing you've got to start learning is to hold that pole up. That's it, like that. So I want you to start thinking for yourself now what you're going to do. Uh, loose fit something. Yeah. Only four or five. Just that noise. I've been to so many different venues in the country and you'll sit there and then you'll chuck like four or five pellets over the top and you get a bite. It's uncanny. Uh, but it works. It doesn't matter if you're fishing in shallow water or deep water. Yep. Nice. Like it. Like it. Right. Get in back. Get down to your top kit. Just take your time. It's a decent fish, that. A few sixes. I just want you to concentrate on that because this is your bread and butter stuff. This is what, you know... Sometimes you might do this for a lot of your match and might not only have to change when you need to. So we're not really feeding nothing else. It's just no point at the moment, do you know what I mean? 
because there's a quite a few there's a few silvers about in there I just want to concentrate on that what well done mate F1 or a carp F1 that yeah lovely so if you do up that band if you do up that band like through go into the the actual band itself back through up, make sure you have plenty of material then like Zoltz I think you've only changed the band once. I think that was your mistake, wasn't it? I think yeah. I think Zolt took the band off accidentally when he was taking the pellet off. But we've not actually changed the band yet. So if you get it right, it's actually a lot less hassle. Actually, you can show it on the desi cam. I have got a desi cam, but it's raining at the minute. I don't want to mess it up. So I'll leave it where it is at the minute. Okay. I'm not a technical person, Zolt. Uh, that That's why you do the technical stuff and I do the easy stuff. I think throwing, if we can, throwing's the way forward and dropping your rig in right. But if I throw it too much weight in... Yeah, just go careful. Stronger. Yeah, not always though. So just spread that out a little bit. Now bulk it, like bring your bulk up. Up, so you can see the bulk. And then down. Now you know what I do sometimes, where I put my bulk in and follow it over like that. That's worth trying as well. See that then? Yeah. You just struck it that. Oh, you would say. Oh, 100%. You sometimes, the, the worse the bite, bigger. the bigger the fish. You'd have thought that had been on. The next bite you had was like a sail under. There you are. We're getting going now, aren't we? After like 20 minutes. So, what have you learned so far with your feeding? And a lot of the times, I think personally, when the fish are really feeding heavily, you can feed very little bait and just bag up. When the fish aren't feeding, sometimes you've got to feed more bait to get them going, then back off a little bit. See, he's unhooked himself. Oh, has he had your band off? No. Nope. He's all right. Pounding a bit. Definitely makes a difference when you feeding something. Yeah, chucking, but you've got to go careful. Just got to go careful with that. Because all of a sudden they'll come off the bottom and they'll drive you nutty. Just throw a few sixes before you put your next pellet on because we didn't throw any in when... That's it. Sometimes, depending on the fishing, and in that match, we might have to chuck four mils there. If the fishing goes off and goes hard, you might have to feed four mils by hand and in a pot. It just depends. And time of day, sometimes you might have to start on fours go to sixes when the fishing's good and then go back to fours mid-match. Depends on how the fishing goes for us, really. And then take a gamble, I think, on meat and corn. If meat and corn goes, but that would depend, I think, on the silverfish fishing side of it. It wouldn't start straight away on the meat. If you know the venue really well and you know you're not going to get bitted out and you want to take a gamble on fishing with meat and corn, absolutely fine. But... Personally, I'd start on hard pellets. That's it, like that. So you've got like four inches of line floating behind your float. Yeah. You know? Even less if you want. Just have it a little bit less. Like that. That's what I'm going to be looking for, though, in that match. Under all circumstances. Wind, rain, snow, <laughs> tow. <laughs> if it's towing, if it's towing, if the wind's going like, for example, right to left and it's towing left to right, that's when you can hold it. It's game on. This, this match is all over, isn't it? Do you reckon that's fouled up? Yeah, that's, that's uh, just take your time. Might not be. So 13 jurors bang on, isn't it? Because if we hook, whatever we hook really. It's something. Yep. I don't have to tell, I'm not gonna tell you every time. I'll just bollock you when you get it wrong. Okay. He's not, he's in the mouth, that one, I reckon. Now, what I want you to do as well is what I've always said to people after we finish today is that line that you're fishing between your elastic and your float, measure it, right? I think we could go a little bit less than that, maybe sort of two inches. It's a better one. Right, I think you could quite easily use. I know it's only that much difference, but you'll be amazed 
the difference that makes out there. So we'll measure it. You can measure it on your side tray with a bit of Tipex or measure it on the containers or anything like that. And then when you go fish, when we fish the match or when you go fishing next time, you will know you're really comfortable with that distance. So when you've plumbed up, you just go on your, on your measurement stick, whether it's a ruler or whatever, cut your line down, you're fishing. You don't have to think about it. It's little things like that. It's amazing how much difference it makes that uh, how I'm holding the pole. And yeah, the, the yeah. Because when you start it off, when you start it off, you're holding it to the side, which is the when you're fishing for silverfish, when you're fishing blood worm and things like that, you can get away with it. With these sort of F ones, you can't. They're so crafty and educated. With with natural baits like maggots and stuff, you can get away with it a little bit. And worms, with pellets, they're so fast at taking it in and spitting it out. You know, you've got to look at shallow fishing. When you're fishing shallow for F1s, how many indications and bites do you miss? Loads. They are sucking that bait in, spitting it out immediately. And I've always said, most when you're fishing shallow for F1s, the only ones you would normally hook are the ones that hook yourself. Yeah. They're actually elastics out. And that's what you're trying to replicate. It's slightly different on the bottom. That's it. Obviously, we've got the edges, so what I would do during the match now, I'd probably, I don't, it's not the right time to feed the edges with, cool, that was a proper bite. I'd probably just literally just chuck a few sixes down there right. just to try and think if there is something coming in, at least I'm trying to build it up. No, I just don't see the point at the moment. That would be a line where I, if this went funny, I could feed that. If it was a hard day, if there was already any bites today, or at the moment, I'd be feeding that as well. But there's no point in the moment. I'm, I'm concentrating on that. Yep, that was a bite. Yep, that's your bites. That was F1. I guarantee it. That's why I don't fish for them. Yeah, but you're doing all right. Yep. That's why you want to be fishing for F1, Zolt, because if you get it right... So I wouldn't feed again because you fed then. Yes. So just not this time. Ladies and gentlemen, is he doing well? We'll see in a couple of weeks' time. See if I've done my job properly. So what we're going to do, we're going to let Zolt just carry along like this. Perhaps not like that. Let's come off. And then we'll get back to you in a bit. And then I'm just going to let him settle down on that because we're not long start. We've only been going for 45 minutes. Just let him get on. He's doing brilliant. Just that hard pellet, hooking the band and just trying to get the feeding right at the moment. Right, we're on the Desi camera. It's going to be interesting, isn't it? There he is. Look, he's having a carry on practicing. Don't look at me. He's all keep concentrating. He's catching some nice F1s. But he's been hard at work doing some prep. Just go in his little rig box. Look, oh, look. So he's got some Carp XS's, he's got some F1 maggots, he's even done a few pace rigs. But we're not doing pace fishing, I've decided that's not happening. Um, so yeah, we are, uh, he's been prepping nicely for us. So. Nicely labelled. They are very nice, the bulks are nice, look at the bulks he's got on them. He can make that out. So he's done loads of prep, now he's going to have to do a little bit more prep when the match comes up. So it's nice to see it. Let's put that out of the way. Might even take a few of them home for myself. So yeah, we're still the fishing short. We've got the bands there. They're the two bands that we've got out. Obviously just banding the pellet, hooking the band. It's massive in my fishing now when I go hard pellet fishing anywhere for F1s and carp, well, and silvers really. When I probably, you know, want, want, want to put a soft pellet on, a bit of meat or a bit of corn over your pellet, etc. But in the moment, we're still going short. Just getting him into that routine, really, of trying to work out. Don't forget to feed your six mils over the top. This is what I've got to try and get him to think for himself. Because in the match, yeah, I will help him. But I also want him to sort of think of himself. And, and, and basically just get on with it. Um, and obviously, in a match situation, we might have to fish out long. And then... Trying to, you know, cup in long if it's windy. It depends on what we do. There might be some method feeder fishing. There might even be a bit of bomb fishing on the day, depending on what lake we're on. So, yeah, he's got all his stuff 
got his top kits all made up. Look at him. What's that, Zolt? A little fish? Yeah, it's right. There's a few little fish. Got Adam there, look. Adam's filming. That's he's got out of the office. Any opportunity to get out of the office, Adam? I'll tell you that now. So he's got a little roachy on. Definitely take some robin reds with you. It might be worth putting a robin red on the hook, actually, Zolt. Just try a robin red a minute. Try yeah. I've got some six mil and eight mils in there. Yeah, so at the moment we're plodding along, quite nice. You've probably had like six or eight F1s, some nice skimmers. And uh, let's have a look. There you go. So you can see the band now it's sat on there. Absolutely ideal. Get back at the result. Get back to you shortly. Whilst Zolt's just latched into another big F1, I think it's an F1, on a Robin Red again. That Robin Red was a good idea. Yeah, that's why I held it back a little bit. Oh, okay. Just to see. It might be foul look though, Zolt, so don't get too cheeky. I'm going to show you the easiest and best way of banding or hooking the band. Now, what I do, I've got the band in my fingers there, and what I do is put the hook inside the band and make sure you hook the band. Make sure you've got lots of material. And the band sits like that. It sort of goes up towards the shank of the hook. It doesn't look right there until you put a pellet on. Let's get a six mil pellet. This, is, this can be any size pellet, four, sixes or eights. Zolt's using a bander, but I can actually do it with me fingers. Put that over the pellet like that. Give it a little wiggle so the pellet, so the band rather, sits flat as possible on the pellet. Like that. And you can just move that up the shank. It's just the start of the shank. And what I mean by the shank is that straight bit there. So it's just up from the bend. And as you can see, it sits on there absolutely perfect. And that's what we're doing at the moment. And uh, it just makes things a lot easier when you want to put like a soft pellet on want to put a bit, a bit of meat on or a bit of corn or even a piece of a piece of worm on the or like change the maggots so a lot lot easier than something i've been doing for absolute years never nice f1 zolt but we're going to get him to come off of that at the moment or in a minute and uh get him on the method that will depend in the match what goes on around us and also what the short pole, in a match situation, the short pole might not happen. And we might have to be on the method a little bit quicker and we might not even have to chuck it out at all. Um, but anyway, he's doing brilliant at the moment. Just putting that Robin Red on over the normal pellets. is uh, It's gotten a couple of fish really, really quick. Change over time now. We're on the just change over to the method. First cast on the method. First cast. I'm sure you're going to get some bites. Now, Zolt, if we'd have been fishing a match today, because that island is in catapult range, I'd have been saying to you, or I'd have been catapulting a few pellets over pellets. there because you're sort of like trying to build it up. So if you do need to use it, that's what a lot of people make mistakes sometimes. So the nice little shot with that 12 foot rod. See, he's all right. He's all right with the method. It does not. Now, why I would have my rod. That rest needs to be round in front of you. I know the island slightly to the right hand side. You've got a massive bow at the minute, which needs to be tightened up. Obviously, don't drag the feed along the bottom. I've got a little yellow. Started off at the ego abandon, but obviously, like any method feeder fishing, you can put double maggot on, hard pellets. But we've gone straight over. Just putting micros, Ryan. Is that an indication then? Yep. Oh, there's a few there. And the same thing with F1s. We've got our ground bait as well. 
but like I always do with method feeder fishing, unless I know the venue so well, I know how to, you know what to do. Start on micros, and then you can add your ground bait in as you go. And then by the end of the session, if it's hard, you might have to just put neat ground bait on and fish little. Oh, Zolt. That, we're not fishing for skimmers, mind. Okay. So you can sit on your hands a little bit. So what we're going to do, just using a mould, two mils. Now, like I said, these two mils, are, they feel a bit dry, they're about right. Uh, it feels all right. Yeah, we might have to have a, like a little container by the side so you can just damp them. The rain's keeping us damp, actually. So, just simple. Like, three quarters, fill in the mould, band them on, straight in. Nice little chuck to the island. Oh, nice, Zolt. Rod down. Steady Eddie. It's not an easy cast, that, with a 12-foot rod. No. That's nearly fishing to hand. Let's see if we can get a bite on film. So just a little bit of practice for him. He doesn't need that much practicing on the feeder. I think he's going to be well sorted with that, it's the pole. And what we're going to do, we're going to go down the edge. He's still feeding a few hard pellets down that margin. Or he was, he might have forgot by the looks of it. This is this is what you've got to do, folks, is keep that a little bit of bait. It doesn't matter on the feeder. If the bait, if the, <clears throat> this is where you can pick a catapult up, mess about with things, you know, fire a few over the top. No, it's not easy to do when you are fishing the pole and you don't want to stop fishing. But we're going to carry on the method for a little bit. Let him just have a little, a little go on this until we go down the edge. And like I said, all we've been doing is just chucking a few, few pellets down the edge. <clears throat> it is that sort of venue where I don't think you want to feed your micros or your ground bait until very close to when you actually want to start fishing it. Because I think sometimes you're wasting it because of the depth as well. I think there could be a lot of sewerfish down there. It might not be, but I, when we started off and there was a few roach, a few skimmers about, I just thought we got to go very careful down the edge. Back on the live Desi cam. Is that a carp salt? No, F1. On the F1, on the method. And I just want to go for a little tip as well. What we had this cast is we actually double loaded the method. It's a deadly way of fishing. These are the sort of things that you've got to try when you are fishing the method feeder. So believe you me, it makes a huge difference. So you want a little bit more line out there. Result, you've got you've got not enough line. So when you're netting a fish like that, you need basically the same amount of line as the length of the rod. You can see that that's just not enough. That's too. There's not enough line. Just let him net that and I should give him a I should tell him off. He's just let a bit of line out cheekily then, haven't you? No. Yes you did. No, I didn't. So he's got a little bit too much bend in that rod now, if you look at that. Yeah, he's letting it off. So he knew he was wrong. So really when you net a fish on the method, you should have the same amount of line out as you as the length of the rod. And that enables you to get the fish in and keep a slight bend. Alright, Zolt. We know you've caught one. <laughs> He's happy about that. Little yellow banner. No, we don't. We can use a new, a new one, Zolt. It's all right. I think Ian, it's on your baits. Would be quite happy if, if we use two bandoms in a day. So he's double loaded the feeder that time, which he's going to show you now, aren't you? Yeah. Because he's been he's been loading it just singly, but that bite come really really quickly by double loading it. He's got a little yellow band them. Simple setup, in line, that 360 bead on there, one of the new beads, which is an awesome bit of kit. So what he does, he fills the mould up first, level, puts that, puts the feeder in it. No, no work bait this time, Zolt, remember? Oh yeah. This is gonna be problems in this match, ladies and gentlemen. So he loads that, crams that on with his hand, like that, and then puts a little bit more back in the mould. Yep, hook bait in it. So basically what happens is that bit with his hook bait, that is definitely probably 100% coming off as it hits the water. 
but you've got a load of bait there and you've got the bit that we put on first off it stays on the feeder and everything obviously all the f1s and the carp are coming around the feeder especially this time of year so he's got a nice little chuck to iron over he won't go in the tree oh result that was lovely he even clipped that was a tiger woods that just clipped the trees and it went into the 18th hole <laughs> so yeah yeah look at that look absolutely brilliant that's what i mean by just changing things around double loading the feeder he's caught one he didn't even have the, he didn't even have line, uh, time to get the line down you see him get this one out still got a nice action over what uh result that 12 footer on it yeah. far too long for what we're doing but you know he's going to have to be prepped up next time a little bit too much line again. That's why I always have my clutch set. A bit lighter result so you can pull the clutch out. A little bit. Go on. That's it. You can adjust it like that. You're stocky. Well done, mate. So I'm going to carry on for this for a little bit and I think then we'll go down the edge and uh, call it a day. Well, it's not really happening down there result. Nope. Which Not doesn't really. surprise me, to be honest. You never know, do you? Because I, the thing is, when we started this morning, it's actually been steady, and it not like solid. It's been nice fishing. The method's probably been the quickest. I would say, yeah, wouldn't it? You wouldn't have come off of that really if that had been a match. Well, you might have come off of it right at the death, but that that edge. We've had a couple of F ones few roach, a couple of skimmers. But I think we you know, I think we go back on that short line and then just give that a quick go on that and then finish off because we ain't got long to go now. It's been like four and a half hours, which I think's you know, you've you've done brilliant. The method's been good, hasn't it? Even though we haven't spent that much time on it. Yeah. They were definitely round them islands. Even well, the weird thing is they're around the island but they're not down the edge. No, no not not it's strange, isn't it? You need to fish at least like two feet far yeah. from the island. So we'll go back on that short line because you've been pinging a few. That's the one thing as well, which I've tried to teach you is whatever you're doing, even if you're fishing that method, even if you're fishing down the edge, don't forget the, don't the, forget the short line. Even if you're just chucking a couple of pellets in there, you know, a couple of six mils, not really bother that left hand line because I think it's been quite tricky that to like when we're when we're actually doing a coaching thing like this, he's trying to stick to what like one or two lines really. But prep prep for that match, you're definitely gonna want you know that 12 foot rod I think for fishing up against the island. If we are on island lake, because it is like 40 meters to the island, some of it. I think short on pellets like you've been doing today would be an absolute must to start with anyway. There's one thing we might have to set up is a top kit in one. So we might need another line or another another rig for that because late in the match, you can catch a lot of fish. It's slightly different to this lake where this lake goes quite deep quickly. That lake doesn't. It slopes off quite uh, gentle. Let's just see if we can nail one on that just to finish off really. But what do you think you've learned really? Definitely, I was holding the pole on the wrong way. Yeah. That's, I can see that that makes a huge difference. Don't forget, to feed, even if you're catching on one line, don't forget to feed your other line. Yeah. That's that's my usually my mistake that I always... Yeah, you sort of forget. Yes, yes, because I'm just trying to concentrate to catch a fish, catch a fish. And yeah. I forgot the other line. And usually when I forget and after feed it, I usually I overcook it. Yeah. Feed it less but not constantly but regularly yeah regularly it's definitely the way it'd be different in the match it will be different in the match yeah, yeah it's definitely the lake shows in different a different lake you know it's very obviously we're only just away from hopefully that we might be we may, well we might be on this lake yet yeah? you never know it'd be like to be it'd be nice to come on this lake after fishing it but that lake is similar, it's just not quite as deep uh, close in. You've got shallower margins on that. Well, some, yeah, they can be tricky to catch, mind. 
they can come in your peg and you can't catch the fish, you know, and but that's what it's all about. Oh yes, sir. -ree. See that would have been a nice line today. Yes. And you'll find that on a lot of venues. That was a proper bite. That was like a proper paste bite. That was. Oh, you got paste on. No. <laughs> Can I make some, some no, paste you know we're not doing paste. There's too much info, there's too much going on. I can't handle that as well. So yeah, rig wise, I think F1 maggots. I think F1 maggots are the float really because we're fishing for F1s as well. And you know how tricky they can be with the little bites we've been getting today. Another robin redfish, that isn't it? Yep. Yeah. So I think that's you know, I think bring some carp excesses just in case. I think, I think. Ideally, we'll be using a Carp XS 4B12 on a top kitten one, an F1 maggot a little bit further out, just for those delicate bites, because there's some stocky F1s in here, like a pine yeah. like that one was. Um, maybe long pole, depending on where we draw and what the conditions are like, and a method feeder, and obviously down the edge. Uh, down the edge, will be using what you've used today, Carp Shallow, maybe in a 4B12, because it is um, the nice, the, the thing about yeah, some of the other lakes you can get in whatever well i would say you want 18 inches where that's like three three foot so that's it really 017 main lines hooks you've already got a nice selection of hooks and um yeah just a few dead maggots and yeah what we've got here is going to cover you for the match um hopefully in like a week or two's time now i think it'd be good Joel. i think it'd be good for you it'd be good for the people that are watching and um, trying to sort of suss out because there's lots of things you can do on on these sort of venues. You know, some people just say, "I'm going to do that today. Is I'm just going to." Actually, gonna... too many things what you can do. In Sometimes that's what I think people choose an option. They say, "What well, I'm going to fish a I'm going to fish a feeder and a bomb today," you know, or short pole method because they they get confused with things, you know, which is what I don't want you to do. I want you to come here, set up a couple of. Um, lines and and sort of concentrate on those lines and make them sort of work if you know what i mean there's a lot there's a lot of fish on that line isn't there? i know they're not all f1s there's an odd skimmer but you can just sense that's a good line there's no bubbles coming up which is really nice if that was really if it was really really fizzing you know there's a little fish there's a few of those around but you've got to expect that and they're not you know they're not massive but See if we can get one more F1 for the road. One more. Watch your shot in pattern as well. I always look at that. Every time I'm fishing, I always look because when you land a fish, even if it's a little roach like that, you see how it's moved your, your dropper shot. I look at that all the time. There's things that I do without even thinking about it. Because obviously when you netted that fish, that's moved the dropper shot up a bit. I wouldn't, I'd just go down. Yeah, we're going to put another Robin Red on. And that's one thing you need to just do on the day. There's no point trying to do it with your fingers if you can't do it. Yeah. You're just wasting time. Just go we're back in, just go straight back out, Salt. No, because you put quite a few formulas in last time, didn't yeah. you? And straight down. That's it. That's it. Flop it over. It sort of put me off on that line of actually feeding meat because of the little fish. There's, I know you've not caught loads of little fish, but you've had, you've missed a lot of indications off yeah. a little fish. And I think fishing with meat there, I think it'd been a bit of a mare with fight, uh, striking all the time. Yeah. And if you're not the if you're not really quick, I don't mind it when I'm fishing because I'm quite quick of like shipping in and out. Yeah. But if you're not the quickest, you spend a lot of time like shipping in and out all the time for nothing. Where I think with hard pellet, you're, you're at least, you know, you're in and out, up and down until yeah. you get a fish. So just throw a few, few sixes over that in. It's like that now. If that had been a meat bite, you'd have been out yes. putting another piece of meat in. But I think the weather's affected it. I think it's had a big effect today. I mean, I'm we, yeah, salt. 
Look at the bite, oh, tiny little bite, and it's a big fish. Managing. Yeah, I know. At least that is the biggest thing today, plumbing up, watching for those little bites. So we're going to get this one out and call it a, call it a day. Because I'm actually sat in here. Oh, Zol. Well, I know it came off. Um, Come on, we've got to get one more. We can't finish on a, we can't finish on a, a lost fish. I'm actually sat here in a hoodie all day, aren't we? I'm, I'm actually, it's actually quite cold, actually. Cool. I got a Celsius. <laughs> that's only, I had the Celsius because that's the only thing I had in my van. Because I was going to come here like Adam did with his shorts on. He's made a massive mistake. Oh, see that then? Should have had that. What? Nah, yes, so oh, yes. That's what I've been trying to teach you, that. Sometimes it's the only thing you get. That little, you think, oh, what was that? It's too late then. Where my brain goes, no, wallop. Yes. Lovely, that. That's You're just waiting for the right bite, aren't you? If every bite was like that, you'd be getting one every chuck really quick, but it ain't. And they can be really funny. They can be just off the bottom. Really, really... Strange some days, F ones. But one thing we have got to do when we finished after this fish is just mark that line. I think we should take two inches off of that between the elastic and the the float for fishing like on that short line, and you know exactly where you are then for your match, and you can use that as you go along with your commercial fishing anyway. So what well I mate, hold him up for the. Folks at home, look. There he is. He's done awesome today. Absolutely brilliant. Are you proud of me? I'm very proud of you, Zolt. Thank you, Dave. I will let you know when you've won the match. If you win the match, I might even take you out for a Mackey D's. Really? Well, yeah, possibly. Okay. Guys, did you hear that? <laughs> so we'll mark that. Just mark that on your side tray now, that line between the elastic and pole. So, somewhat on your box. No, put it between your legs, on your legs, look. Float at the top. You are, so it's basically body, your body of your float is on one leg, yes. and then the line is the start of the other leg. So, I re yeah, I reckon we could take just a fraction off of that. It's a 35 centimetres. 35 so centimetres. It's, it's, it's a foot. Yeah. Yeah, so we want like nine inches, I reckon. Okay. Because I think you could just fish a little bit shorter the way you're holding the... Something like... Yeah, it's only a little bit. It's basically that off, and that makes a massive difference. Okay. And to be fair, if it's, that line is shorter, it's easier to hold the pole as well, I Sometimes. Think. Depends on how on windy wind, it is, etc., etc. Et so you don't want to go too short where you start doing that with your float, because then you're... Ob you know, you're ob well, you just, it's just a waste of time. Yes. I don't, you'll probably see that when I go fishing, so well, you do lots of filming. I don't fish a really short. I can yeah. do, but sometimes you fish too short. It's not worth doing. Yeah, because you're just causing more yeah. trouble for yourself than benefit. For yeah. You. So what we do? I have a clear up. Yep. And uh, what well a mate. Thank you very much. Uh, as well. So I'm not going to charge you today. No. <laughs> oh, thank you. It's all right. No problem at all. <laughs> not getting involved in that conversation. <laughs> Come on, there's a more important thing to do. I'm tired. I'm mentally suicidal after that day. It was a hard day. It though. was a hard day, yeah. It was, uh, it was interesting, Zolt. Anyway, let's talk about learned, how the day's the gone. You have? Yes. Uh, what have you learned, Zolt? Bear in mind we're talking about the match. Uh, feeding. Hmm. Feeding regularly. Yeah. It's, it's a key to... To get the bites, uh, definitely I need to work on it. Uh, how I read the bites because I miss a lot of bites. Today. That's hundred percent. That yeah, I think some of those bites were roach and skimmers. I don't think they're all F one. There were some. Not, not all, but, but you're not going to hit every bite anyway. Do yes. you know what I mean? It is the nature of the beast. Yeah. That's what happens in a style of fishing. Yeah, definitely. I, I learn how important it's how you hold the pole mm. and how what's. Uh, the line yeah. between the port it and the, and your float that's a very important yeah because otherwise I'm 
on the beginning I was just missing too many bites. Yeah, you're striking, you're basically holding the pole there and your floats here and then you're sort of striking like that and you yes. get that la that time lapse between that and that where if you can just hold that, have a little bit of line in the water, hold your pole like that and then you're on your yes. float immediately. It makes a, you don't even have to strike it when they they hook they themselves really. It makes a huge difference, yeah. definitely. Just a pity about the meat fishing. I think the meat fishing's gone backwards. Well, we haven't really tried meat because there's been quite a few surfish feeding yeah, today. But to be fair, that's the weather, I think, because today the weather is, wasn't great. No, it wasn't. It's been a bit tricky. And um, But you fish brilliantly. I think you've learned enough now. Obviously, going to a match here, you're going to be fishing against the local guys, the, the guys that come here week in, week out. So it's going to be tricky for Zolt. It's going to put him under a lot of pressure. It's going to put me under pressure as well because I want him to do well. You know, I don't expect result to um, do one day's coaching and then go and win the match. Or do I expect that? Yeah, yeah. I probably do. Yeah, actually. you do. Yeah, you so, do. Um, so it was a little. He's got to do a little bit of prep. Not much. A couple of rigs. A um, couple way, of feeder how, rods. How was my, my rigs? No, way? absolutely spot on. Honestly, his prep's been brilliant. No, you know. You, you know. You know what? Yesterday I was watching your videos. How, how to tie it. Are you serious? <laughs> were you were you filmed them? I know. Well, I had to watch it. What chance have we got in life, honestly, ladies and gentlemen? I can't believe it. Are you actually serious about that? I, I, I'm, I'm serious. I'm serious. In the evening, uh, go on the YouTube. Go back uh, when we were have you got a in the garage. Have you got a memory loss? Uh, a bit, yes. Oh, right, OK. Yes, yes. On that note, I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've seen, you know, what we do on these sort of venues. We've not been able to move around the peg today. We've not needed to because we know, or I felt like every bit of bait you fished today or every bait, every bit of bait you fed, it was be a net, either by an F1 or a silverfish. And I think the silverfish tell you that, obviously, because we're catching roach, we've caught a few skimmers, and that's when you don't have to move around lines too much. Other days, when you're in there and you get an odd bite off an F1, that's when you can start throwing that other line. Yes and using the two lines. It didn't feel like today we needed to do that. That was a handy tip in the beginning. That yeah. To, to plumb, we plumb we might up. not be able to do that on that match. But anyway, hopefully you've picked up some little tips just on this sort of coaching side of things. You'll definitely pick up more tips during the match because that's when the pressure's on. That's when... You mean the pressure on me? Well, and me, Zolt. It's not just you, it's me as well, because obviously I want you to do well. And um, I don't, you know, I want you to do well because that's what I'm like. Um, I might chuck you off the box during the match and say, let me have a quick go a minute. But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, look out for the, the live match that will be coming off, the, obviously, after this video. Zolt's got to do a little bit of prep. Yep. And um, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed it. And... Don't forget to subscribe and like for the Preston YouTube channel and uh, thank you for watching.